Hello and welcome to another phonology class. Today we start a new unit, unit 2, and the topic is allophonic variations. Okay, so let's start. Um, first we have, uh, okay, we are going to describe phenomena that we know. Most of you, you, most of them, you know them already, but you don't have the technical name. So we're going to name the phenomena that you know already uh, technically. Okay, so the first one is called a vowel reduction. Vowel reduction has to do with the fact that most English vowels turn into a schwa whenever they are in an unstressed environment. So the e sound turns to schwa. The e sound turns to schwa. The a sound turns to schwa. The o sound turns to schwa. The u sound turns to schwa. All vowels turn to schwa in unstressed environments. What do we call this phenomenon of the English language? Vowel reduction. Okay? Imagine that we have this phenomenon in Spanish. Imagine the word mañana, for example. Where is the stress? Mañana. Second syllable, isn't it? That means that if we have this phenomenon in Spanish, the first syllable and the last syllable would turn into a schwa. Okay? And it will sound like this. Mañana. Mañana. Like this. Okay? Another example in Spanish. Let me see. It could be... Terraza, for example. Okay? The stress is in the second syllable. Terraza. That means the first syllable and the last syllable would turn into a schwa. So the, it would sound like this. Terraza. 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 Like this. Okay? So unstressed syllables turn into a schwa. Notice what, what the manual says. It says, in English, unstressed syllables, simple vowel nuclei, reduce to schwas to mid-central articulatory position and highly lax. This is both a phonemic and a phonetic feature. Write an example, it says. Okay, so let me write an example for that. Phonemic and phonetic. What does that mean? It means that you can find schwas in phonemic transcriptions, as in the word about, for example. The insert the symbol. Oh, I need to move this. The schwa is here. Notice that this occurs. In phonemic transcriptions. Let me enlarge the screen so that you can see better. And it also occurs in phonetic transcription. So it's both a phonemic and a phonetic feature, it says. Okay, so we need the stress mark. Let me add stress there. About. About. Okay, so this is both a phonemic and a phonetic feature. And is an English language feature, not Spanish. Then it says pronouns like this, like I, you, we, and them are usually unstressed and have a weak pronunciation. When you is not at the end of a sentence, the vowel sound is often reduced to ashwa. So, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Like this. Pronouns are stressed when the speaker wants to emphasize them or make contrast. How would you transcribe what do you do? What do you 
do. So if I emphasize you, then it's a full vowel, an oo sound, you. But if I want to emphasize what, what, what do you do? What do you, do you, do you, yeah. It's a schwa. Okay. So what do we call this feature? Vowel reduction. Second feature. We're studying allophonic variation. Second feature says nasalization before nasal consonants. We know this already. It says, in English, vowels and diphthongs become slightly nasalized before nasal consonants, but not as much as in Spanish. Nasalization is a phonetic feature. What does it mean? It means that we can find nasal sounds or nasal diacritics only in phonetic transcriptions, not in phonemic transcriptions. Okay? Nasalization is a phonetic feature in both English and Spanish. And it is phonemic in Guarani and French. Why is it phonemic in Guarani and French? Remember, phonemes change meaning. If I, if I pronounce a Guarani word, an oral sound, and then a nasal sound, it may change the meaning of the word. But in Spanish, it just sounds like forifo. Or in English, it sounds funny, oral or nasal. It doesn't change the meaning. Okay? So you need to provide examples there of nasalization in phonetic transcription. In Spanish, vowels are nasalized between two nasal consonants. These are the nasal consonants in English, in Spanish. For example, hermano. And notice that the A sound has been nasalized because it's between nasal uh, consonants. Okay? You can provide another example there. Third phenomenon is called velarization. Yes, it's like that. Velarization. That's the name. And it says nasal consonants become velar before velar sounds in both English and Spanish. This is both a phonemic and a phonetic feature. Okay? Which are nasal consonants? This one. And which is a, a velar consonant? This one. Okay? So it says they it become they become velar before velar sounds. Which are velar sounds? This one and this one. So every time you have a combination like N K, it will turn into I'll show you N K like this. In any transcription, phonemic and phonetic. Every time you have ng combination, it will turn into. I will show you. Ng. Ng combination. Like this. Okay. For example, the word. Uh, let me move this. The word ink. We write it like this because of the N NK combination here. And the phonetic transcription would be this one nasal K. Like this. Ink. What do we call this phenomenon? Velarization. 